Hello and welcome to School Talks. I'm Purva and today we have with us a very special guest. We have Reshmi ma'am who's been with us for 17 years. She's been leading our uh, St. Mary school and uh, today we are just going to have a nice conversation with her. Hi Reshmi ma'am, welcome to School Talks. Hello Purva. Thank you for uh, giving this opportunity to be a part of this School Talk. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh can you tell us a little bit about your experience so far? Okay, I am with Swiss family from uh, last seventeen years. I have started my journey as a teacher. I have worked in Saint Willibrod School for around five years, and then I have uh, taken over Saint Mary School in two thousand nine uh, with a start of sixty students, and now we are a uh, thousand plus in Saint Mary School. Wow, that is incredible, Reshmi ma'am. How has the journey been so far, yar? when i started as a teacher uh, and it was a very good start because uh, now when i am a principal and when i when i was a teacher i understand i have worked closely with students how i knew what was the trouble of uh, a teacher in the classroom and then when i have started this school saint mary school so i am able to associate in the teacher angle and right. i can understand students from the teacher point of view and then you know we can contribute to the uh, solutions and challenges and the problems which comes on daily basis uh, so now you're more into the teacher also now why you were a teacher before this so you got these experiences with children and now you closely understand what they require so you can train your teachers accordingly basically yes really because i got that experience and when a teacher say uh, that what is possible and what is not possible right so i i as a person i understand so i can bring a human touch to it and i can also tell my stories of being a teacher and uh, and then we can come along and sort it out how to overcome a project or whatever uh, they are facing correct would you want to shed some light on these challenges that you faced so far Uh, the methods of teaching has been changed so uh, in ancient time the teachers were like a sage right okay so uh, whatever the teacher says uh, the one teacher in front and all other children are like the followers but instead now the teachers are like you no know, they have been sidelined a bit they be like a guidance to the students right so to have that change to have that switch uh when any teacher comes up to take that change in the classroom is what i have seen as a challenge because uh, again from post pandemic and pre pandemic uh, the attitude of students in their classroom right. has been changed the discipline levels have been changed the amount of respect what teacher should get uh, is uh, been increased from the time of pre pandemic to post pandemic now how to overcome this in sometimes uh, to increase the teachers uh, you know uh, motivation yeah to okay, lift their spirit to up to lift basically. their sp- spirit up and then we have to do a lot because we can't be just be teaching uh, as a teacher you can't be just be teaching giving some notes uh, you know reading from the book right. so then you need to do a active teaching because now the demand is like students learn through different ways of uh learning now every student uh, they have their unique potential unique capabilities so some of them uh, learn through uh, you know just uh, they are audible learners then there are visual learners then there are kinesthetic learners but it is always said you know when they do they learn more so in my school uh, what we do is we uh, a school's motto is about experiential learning so what i want every teacher to bring in the classroom is they should give that experience not only that the teacher or random students are not getting that experience but right. everybody should experience that uh, you know the learning so how are you training your teachers for this okay so we have started with a project okay so like you know uh, here uh, why i have started that project somewhere i felt that you know the concern which i told that the learning 
the learning stage has been changed yeah, yeah, okay yeah. the attention span of children has been changed so then uh, how my school will be a different school okay or how can i give to the students the best uh, so that we have come up with a uh, project called lesson review it's a simple project we have started uh, called lesson Re- lesson review project okay okay so the lesson review project is nothing but uh, once the teacher explains in the classroom of course the teacher's explanation also she does a lot of activities she shows her presentation uh, then they have some uh, you know interactive uh, session which is going on mm. other than that we make sure that the students role students agency has come up so in that uh, teacher gives the concept teacher divides the group into four or five parts and then they do a group discussion uh, right. teacher gives the concept to the students then the students uh, they discuss among themselves now there are variety of students in that group right. so we make sure that every day they will not be there in the same group and we will make sure that there are some students who can guide the other students also so uh, so that, that is up to the teacher that the teacher decides that and then this children they whatever they understood from the teacher they reteach to the fellow students wow. so here there we are bringing collaboration and the peer learning so once they have done so then they bring it to the uh, entire class and then we are presenting the students themselves they present to the uh, fellow students so once this presentation is done so they become very confident right the soft skills develops like communication collaboration so as a school we wanted all our students to be nurtured with the right. life skill as well as the soft skill which is very much necessary for the future stickler right so as a school you all have identified that collaboration uh, and uh, you know buddy learning systems presentation uh, presentation skills are very important for future that is to come basically yes and children need to be trained on that yeah that is incredible reshmi ma'am thank you so much for telling us about that uh, also i wanted to ask you uh, about your uh, culture at school what are the values that you know you have at school that uh, that helps you maintain the culture in your school see saint mary schools we have uh, the values which we are focusing is service motivation humility sustainability wow. knowledge respect and overall love and you know the most important value everybody should have is empathy kindness and compassion so it is like you know it is very easy to say that that child cannot do that thing but we as a but we as a school we as a teacher we as an educator what we have to bring is how can we make sure that that child does better for example as a, from a parent perspective uh, from the generation which we are they just compare the marks yeah. and there are some students okay those who have learning disabilities so maybe learning disabilities maybe they may not be able to concentrate little bit they may not be able to write like others but such parents when they come to me i always make them understand see everybody has their unique potential right. and by marks we cannot we can't compare our students with your own children with any other children and uh, maybe and we have found out that when if that particular child is not good at studies but then they are good at some other activities right so we have this competitions we have this activities we have other projects which will make sure that everybody is involved and everybody is acknowledged right. and everybody is identified and then they'll get that agency their choice yeah. and get that autonomy you briefly mentioned how parents are, uh, are they compare children mm-hmm. you know they they mostly do it via marks so yeah. if you know some their child might secure less marks and uh, the other yeah. child might have more marks something like that so do you have any other assessment methods that can highlight that the child has unique uh, qualities anything yeah so um, uh, more than assessment uh, to prove uh, like you know we had recently we had our base camp so in that base camp every child presented whatever they whatever they have learned to their parents right so in whatever language they said so in this open house this last two open houses what we had 
so in that parents were very happy in fact they have given some testimonials you can see in my social media handles so they were very happy to see how the students were speaking so maybe if the child so we have in that open house we have kept a written assessment also we have kept that the the presentation what they have done and plus then the parent itself the parent who, who came and told like we have a one to session i randomly check parents like you know if they had a concern then again i i follow up with them so after the open house one of the uh, parent uh, who complained me about the marks so i spoke to them after the base camp uh, so the parent was very happy indeed that say maybe my child may not be able to write okay but he the child is speaking well right. and he and the way he has made the presentation so then i think slowly and steadily we as a school we as an educators can change the mindset of the people right okay because uh, uh, that is what uh, we are for wow that is again incredible reshmi ma'am uh, so you you briefly mentioned something about social media yeah. how are you managing your social media yeah. accounts and because right now you know social media is everywhere and we need to have something on there as every school i think we should right yeah so how are you doing that yeah so i made it uh, uh, i made it a point that every day there would be one reel one or two reels wow so how are you managing that uh, yeah so we have made a, a sheet a monthly sheet in which every teacher uh, time is assigned that this day you have to work because may, mainly teachers come we don't have time so i have gone through their timetable then i have assigned them people to support them mm. uh, and then slowly now they have learned to make reels but now in the beginning what i have done is i have given them my concept and told them that in the reel every child should speak right because when we started posting in social media parents have come in and then the parents said you know मेरा बच्चे का नहीं आता है ओके सो देन आई मेड इट अ पॉइंट दैट एवरी वन मंथ वन चाइल्ड एट लीस्ट विल गो इन द सोशल मीडिया वाओ सो एवरीबॉडी गेट्स टू बी द स्पॉट लाइक बेसिकली या सो देन द टीचर स्टार्टेड सो द लेसन रिव्यू एक्टिविटी व्हिच आई हैव सेड वी हैव फ्लिप्ड दैट एंड देन वी मेड श्योर दैट हैज बीन कैप्चर्ड सो दिस विल बी आल्सो अ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन फॉर अस एंड प्लस व्हेन दे ग्रो अप सो आई थिंक दैट विल बी दैट विल बी अ a wonderful situation for them to see they can show to their friends right. that you know when i was in this particular standard i have done this look at my right. uh, videos photos and wow so helping them create so many memories that is amazing reshmi ma'am so now that you've mentioned about social media that brings me to technology okay <laughs> so how are you how are your teachers dealing with technology and how are students adapting to it is there something that you want to shed uh, some light on so when uh, while talking about te- technology i should thank uh, you know there are good point in pandemic as well as there are some disadvantages so i think in the technology prospect with teachers i think uh, pandemic was a blessing for us because every teacher when they every teacher started teaching online okay they were like pros and then i think till that time they must have not thought of you know going online taking a zoom class or taking a uh, class in google classroom making right. sheets and so many other things because they, they they only had to do with their registers they only had to do paper correction but now as we have uh, uh, been into the technology they started using uh, after the pandemic they have started using a lot and moreover in our school we have this uh, monthly newsletters mm. uh, which uh, they are making in canva so every month from every class there is a class newsletter where all the activities are been re- recorded and then it is being given to the uh, parents mm. uh, even last year we had our mothers day uh, celebration so in that uh, what we have like we even asked students to uh, develop a greeting card in the canva wow so everywhere i think technology is the most important uh, aspect we cannot say that you know i don't know right okay so then so then it is instead you should go ahead with that you should uh, right. so the teachers get training on that uh, and then, then there are a lot of youtube uh, tutorials right of course and then again they learn from each other also 
Right. So you are using technology to develop design thinking, designing skills in children. In children, basically. Yeah. Yes. Have you faced any challenges in terms of uh, how to teach children Canva, and are they doing well? And because you know, it's not very com- complicated, but you know, these primary children might have some difficulties. So, how are you addressing to that? So, uh, the biggest redeemers are your teachers. So, once your teacher is skilled, the student will be skilled. Wow. Now, yeah, uh, there are two choices towards any project. Okay, either you give excuse or you do it. Okay, yeah. no excuses. You do it. Okay, so like um, most of our parents have from lower middle class family, so they don't uh, own a laptop or not. So they all use their smart uh, phone, and most of them may have only one smartphone at home. So even our teachers, when they while tutoring them, so out of their working hours, okay, do they land? They go over and above, and then they make sure that it is being done. Right. So here, the teachers are the saviors, I would say, and then the culture that you know when you take something, you should do it right. like that. So that is the, the the commitment what a teacher has. Again, the students also well, the students like teachers are the role models. Right. So like you can't say anything which you are not doing. Right. So the, when they see that the teachers are so hard working, uh, the teachers are uh, you know always at their toes to do something. And I would say our students are very curious. They enjoy doing, especially technology things, more than uh, pen paper. Yeah, they like <laughs> to go on uh, this technology. Like they are very much curious and very much interested. They just wait for their uh, computer lectures or anything, something <laughs> to be there. So I see that you all have a, a very great sense of community, and you know I see that you all are doing a lot for them. Is there anything else that you are doing apart from just training kids in school? I mean, for the community, for the local community, anything? See, every December for the community also because uh, the end product, what students are, they are going to be benefited to the community. Of course, we have to teach them how they have to live in the community, and the first part. As I said, the most important value is empathy. So every month in the every year in the month of December, we have World of Kindness project. Wow! Where the students contribute and then they help the community where uh, the support is being needed. Other than that, on Republic days or on uh, all other days, they go for this uh, uh, street uh, street uh, shows. Wow! And then they spread the message of no smoking. Like you know, they being a responsible citizen and don't litter the place. And you know, we had this project called the Green Diwali. So they used to go to these societies, and then they used to uh, they like in a group uh, they make lanterns, and in that they will uh, say no crackers, uh, Green Diwali, where uh, you know they have been accepted. And then with that, I found that you know people are uh, uh, acknowledging that even the people, the community is accepting that. So acceptance is also one uh, from the community is also important. Wow! So that I have seen, and uh, that is what we are doing. Uh, and and in this month, we thought that again uh, we wanted uh, students to take ownership. So in this, uh, not in the month, in the year, uh, in the month of December, we are planning to do one uh, project. In this, students only will identify who needs the help. It was like as a school, we used to identify okay this area, this people, what they need. So, so that was a school project. But this year, uh, from a class, uh, like there are houses, we have a tiger, uh, like uh, what we have in mm. all four mm. houses. Mm. So what we uh, they will do some community visit along with their teacher, right. and then they will find out that who needs the help and what would be the help. Wow. Okay. So that you know, involving themselves, not as a random thing. So you bring that, you bring that, then we'll go. So we thought we will do this. Okay. This is this is an initiative, but it is not been executed. But it is we are planning to. It's in talks. So, yeah, in talks. Wow. Amazing, yeah. uh, Rishmi ma'am. Also, now that we've spoken about teachers, you students, I want to talk a little bit about the parents. Also, what are they doing and not doing towards their children's education? Something tell us. Yeah. So, parents are the most important uh, person in a school uh, community because, of course, uh, whatever students, uh, whatever students are saying, the most important part is from the. Uh, they are just the mirrors of their parents. 
and as a parent they have to come and tell us because they are dealing with one child but we are dealing with 40 other children in the classroom so uh, you know over the over the year we will identify but at the same time as a parent it is my uh, as a parent i feel that is their responsibility to tell yeah my child may do this may not do this that that they may if the t- the parent and teacher may have that conversation right and uh we have this meetings like you know every 45 days there is a parent teacher conference in that they discuss okay now somewhere um, the parents may not accept uh, what is been uh, you know let me say is uh, some corrective feedbacks right okay so for example if they are being naughty you tell say that why al- always my child why always so that part of somewhere i feel that you know that acceptance because uh, unless and until the feedback is give uh, feedback we give feedback but the acceptance is not there then it will be very difficult for us to you know because parents should uh, bring that culture in children to get yeah. the feedback yeah. and the feedback is not so uh, in our school we give both positive as well as uh, the correction feedback okay the uh, the both growth and glow feedbacks to the uh, students so that support we need but moreover i feel parents should not be an another entity okay parents should be the part of the school pa- we should have a regular uh, parents should again i feel that parents should not feel that uh, this is our school parents should also feel that this is my school right i mean our school means the community yeah, of right, right right our school it's my school it's like you know your mother we we say that a uh, school uh, our mother we say my mother but to the school most of us say our school but right. when that belongingness comes right. they'll not find fault okay so f- for example if you find if you think the school is yours okay when you see something is not good okay so you come and update us and make sure that uh, this is been followed up and about the students also uh, like you know hiding something from transparency is what is needed so then uh, as a community uh, even the community is also involved in this but as a parent and a teacher and the school as like you know whatever help what we can give we can support them with that other than that parents uh, parents participate in pta and uh, they volunteer in our school uh, we also keep competitions for parents yeah. also so that their involvement is there and in our annual days and all we have this uh, dances and all. so feeling of belongingness is there okay 90% is there and right. the 10% part i think that is only the acknowledgement and uh, you know so once uh, the problem is there we don't have to highlight on problem but we need to highlight on solution right so you saying that all of us are working toward the same goal which is the betterment of our children yeah. right and you know uh, if if parents and teachers and children all of us find a way to sort of work together have that transparency we will uh, you know yeah. definitely uh, have better results and better outcomes yeah. so if we are like you know uh, we can't like you know students in other this we should come together of course and then we should work and then we'll get a better outcome right so as a principal how do you uh, think that you know you can share this message that you know come together let's work together just tell us something of course school talk itself is a very good media <laughs> so that you know people see this and then they understand ki what we wish and other than that in all our uh, conferences all our meetings uh, we uh, educate parents right. tell them that we are for you right we are here for you and for your students so that is what we can do and the same culture if we have with our teachers and not only with the teachers with anybody from the watchman the housekeeping even the vendors everybody is important in the school of course you can't say that you know you are uh, an another part of this institution so everybody comes together and if you have love if you have compassion if you have empathy towards whoever comes to you so i have witnessed this when parents when while you are talking about parents you know they'll come with all their stress they'll come shout and all. i just say sit down <laughs> i'm done okay let's talk what then i could see the changes right okay so uh, even the uh, in the the staff which is sitting in front okay so i think the way we deal with them 
it makes a different i of told course. you uh, when i started the school it was little difficult for me mm. Uh, mm. to convey the parents and to they were not so happy in the beginning but then as and when it has been grown they understood the things have evolved and it has changed that was incredible thank you so much reshmi ma'am you're doing an incredible job uh, with sms and whatever insights that you've given today are really valuable to us thank you so much for being here thank you so much purva you were a very good host thank you for this thank you <laughs>